Okay, let's consider the following example. So define a function from p2 to r3 such that t of p2 is p1, p0, p0, where pt is the set of polynomials of degree at most 2. So to solve this, we should understand what this is. We should, we should understand what is p2, what is p3, and what are all these p1, p0, and so on. Determine whether t is a linear transformation or not. So let's try to solve this. And like I said, it's very hard to solve such a problem if we don't know what are the objects we're looking at and what we need to prove. So first of all, polynomials of P2 is the set of polynomials of degree at most 2. 1 plus, one plus T is in P2, right? This is of degree 1. t squared, it's degree 2, so this is also in p2. 7 plus 8t plus 17t squared is in p2. So powers up to 2 inclusive. The number 3, but it's not a number, it's a polynomial. The constant polynomial 3 is in p2. 0 is in p2. So we have a general feel of what p2 is. Now that we have a general feel, maybe we could just write it out. Even though this is not really part of the solution, it's more part of our understanding. So P2 is all the polynomials AX squared plus BX. Or let's use T, excuse me. It's not so important, but AT squared plus BT plus C, where A b and c are real numbers now these real numbers could be equal to zero okay that's why it's at most two if i would have written a is not equal to zero this is a different space then this is not a vector space if a is not equal to zero then the zero polynomial is not here so it's very important not to state that a is not equal to zero in other words p2 is the polynomials of degree 2, of degree 1, and degree 0. So that's P2. Okay, so for instance, what is P0? Well, if, if P of t is equal to an expression of the following form, we just want to understand what we're dealing with, okay, before we even attempt to solve this problem. Therefore, p of 0 equals 2. Well, if we substitute 0 for t, all we get is c. And p of 1 is just a plus b plus c, right? a times 1 squared plus b times 1 plus c. So that means that t of, if we write p explicitly, and it's not clear that it's a good idea to write p explicitly, right? I'm to make it explicit just so it looks a little bit more concrete, Oops. but um, it's not always better to use an explicit, sometimes we have to use an explicit formulation for p, but not always. So t of this is none other than p1, in other words, a plus b plus c, comma, p0, p0, so c, C. Okay, so at least we have kind of a better understanding. And notice that these are all real numbers. So this is in R3, as stated in the exercise. So the question is, right, so the question is, is T linear? Okay, so we can ask ourselves, is T a linear transformation? Well, this is impossible to solve if we don't understand the question. So what we need to prove is, if this is, this is true if um, for all P and Q in PT, T of P plus Q is TP plus TQ and 2 for all, for every p in p2 
and lambda in the real numbers t of lambda times p I like to write p without the t but maybe it's better to write the t there equals to lambda times t of p so when I write t of p what I really mean is pt and when I write q I mean qt this should be p plus qt so this is being a, a little bit lazy and now we have to try to solve this now, just a remark, you should check, always check beforehand if you take p equals to zero, that t of zero equals to zero. And in our case, if we take, let's say it's p zero is zero, so t p zero. This is not really part of the definition. Um, so we have p one, p zero, p zero. Now, if p is the zero function, then it's definitely the zero polynomial. It's definitely zero at one and zero, zero. Okay, so this is okay, so we can ignore this. See, sometimes this is a useful way to prove that a function is not a linear transformation. Now, I don't know if you can hear, but there's a dog barking. This is the linear algebra dog. Anytime I teach linear algebra, he starts barking. I don't think he likes linear algebra. Right? I don't know if you can hear them. Okay, but let's be serious. So now let's try to solve our problem. And again, let me just remind you how t is defined. So I'm just going to drag this over here. So this is just a quick reminder of what t looks like. Ignore this comma over here. Okay, so let's try to prove this. And I'm going to try to prove this without using the explicit form of P, and I need an explicit form of Q too. So let's start with this. So let's let's try to prove it. Let's write proof. Now maybe the statement's wrong. I after I you know thought about it a bit, I kind of convinced myself that it's correct. So let's take T of P plus Q T. This is just T of P T plus qt. Now this is a function, and in this function I can substitute 1 and 0. So this equals to p of 1 plus q of 1, comma p of 0 plus q of 0. And let's duplicate this. And feel free to stop the video to try to continue the proof, right? It's always good to try to solve it on your own. And now I can just split this up, right? I can split this up into a vector involving these values and a vector involving these values. And that will give me P1, comma, P0, P0 plus I'm just being lazy okay plus the same expression with a Q but this is none other than T of P T plus T of Q T okay so we did check that this is correct now let's try to solve number two to prove number two excuse me so let's let's present a proof so we just proved part one and now let's try to present a proof of part two okay so the same thing and you see i didn't use my explicit explicit interpretation of linear transformation this sometimes does help people to understand what t does but we didn't really need it okay so just be aware of that i think we might have needed it in case we were asked to find see a matrix representing the linear transformation with respect to some basis but that wasn't the question okay so again it's very difficult to solve this problem if you don't know what t is. So I'm just copying it over here. And again, ignore the comma that I have right there. So let's write this down. And I'll be a little bit less lazy this time. I'll write the pt. So t of lambda times p 
of t. Well, I prefer actually writing it like this, lambda times p t. So this is just lambda times p of 1 comma lambda times p of 0 and then lambda times p of 0 again. Now this lambda times p just means lambda times the value of the function. So I could rewrite this as lambda times p of 1 comma lambda times p of 0 comma lambda times p of 0. And we can take out the lambdas, right? This is just, you know, regular interval, uh, triple. This is the number one. Maybe I'll try to write it clear. I'm doing my best to write nicely. It's sometimes a challenge. I wish I had slightly nicer handwriting, but we do what we do our best, right? And this is none other than lambda times p t of uh, p t. So we essentially proved one and two. That means that we have proved. So we have proved that t is a linear transformation. Great. So we're done. Have an amazing day, and see you next time.